Oh, hey. You know, I've been thinking. Back in 1990, it had been almost 20 years since a Phillies pitcher had last thrown a no-hitter. And about 92 years since the Phillies had last thrown a no-hitter before the hometown crowd. And that's even though they had Steve Carlton on the team for more than a decade. He never threw a no-hitter in his entire career. So when Terry Mulholland took the mound at Veterans Stadium on August 15, 1990, nobody realized that he was about to do something very special. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. Don't forget to check out our merchandise. T-shirts, phone cases, masks, notebooks, mugs, and much more. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. So it was August 15, 1990, and the Phillies were in the middle of a three-game series against the San Francisco Giants. At the time, they were in fifth place. Only the lowly St. Louis Cardinals stood between the Phillies and the basement of the NL East. In fact, the Phillies had just come home from a disastrous road trip. When they started the road trip, the Phillies were in fourth place with a record of 51 victories to 55 losses. And this was definitely a far cry from the last time that the Phillies even had a chance of contending, and that was back in 1986. That's when they finished in second place in the East, just behind the world champion Mets. In that road trip, the Phillies dropped five out of six games, including a sweep in Montreal. But now they were back in Veterans Stadium. They had beaten the Giants the night before when former Philly Steve Bedrosian threw a wild pitch to Dave Hollins, scoring second baseman Rod Booker. Don't remember Rod Booker? Neither did I. He was barely in the major leagues for a cup of coffee. The Phillies signed a 31-year-old free agent in the winter, and well, he wound up making the team. And in the August 14th game, well, Booker came in as a pinch runner for Tommy Herr in the eighth inning. At that time, the Phillies were down by one run. He stayed in the game and got three at-bats of his own including one in the 13th inning that set him up to be the walk-off run. Now, the reference to Steve Bedrosian is actually quite interesting. You see, the year before, June 1989, Steve Bedrosian was part of the transaction that brought Terry Mulholland to the Phillies. The Phillies traded away their former Cy Young Award-winning reliever, along with a player to be named later for Mulholland, Dennis Cook, another pitcher, who by the way wound up being a decent hitter. In fact, the Phillies would occasionally use Dennis Cook as a pinch hitter. And third baseman Charlie Hayes. Now players like to say that they prepare for and treat every game equally. But on August 15th, I would bet that Terry Mulholland had an extra bit of motivation since he was facing the team that had drafted him. The Phillies' offense gave Mulholland some wiggle room from the very beginning. In the first inning, after Lenny Dykstra grounded out, Darren Dalton and Von Hayes both walked. Del Murphy popped out, but John Crook, who joined the Phillies in the same month as Mulholland, June of 1989, he hit a single that scored Dalton. And that turned out to be the only run that the Phillies needed that day. Mulholland was just brilliant, striking out the likes of Will Clark and Kevin Mitchell. And for good measure, he got Jose Uribe to strike out twice. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the Phillies gave Mulholland some insurance. With shortstop Dickie Thon on first base, there were two outs, and Lenny Dykstra hit a single to center field, scoring Thon. Darren Dalton then hit his 10th home run of the season, scoring Dykstra. And by the end of the fifth inning, 
the Phillies were up four to nothing. By the middle of the sixth inning, Mulholland had retired 18 batters in a row. A swinging strikeout by Don Robinson ended the Giants' half of the inning. Then, John Crook doubled. Tommy Herr was intentionally walked, and Charlie Hayes hit into a single that scored Crook. For good measure, Mulholland got into the act, hitting a single that scored Tommy Herr. and Terry Mulholland was flying high. But then, in the top of the seventh inning, Mulholland's bid for a perfect game came to an end. After throwing a strike to the leadoff batter, Rick Parker, Parker hit a ground ball to the left side of the infield. Charlie Hayes fielded the ball, but made a throwing error on the play. Parker reached first base on that error. But Parker, the base runner, was then erased on the very next play. Second baseman Dave Anderson also hit the ball to the left side of the infield. This time the play ended in a 6-4-3 double play. And once Will Clark grounded out to end the inning, Mulholland had still faced the minimum number of batters possible. Nervous energy electrifying the stadium for the last two innings. Kevin Mitchell hit a fly ball to Lenny Dystra. Matt Williams, a pop foul to John Crook. Greg Linton, a line drive, again, to Lenny Dykstra. Eight innings down, three outs to go. But the Giants were not rolling over. Bill Bath came in as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning. He grounded out the Charlie Hayes. Jose Uribe then grounded out to Dickie Thon. And with one out left, Roger Craig sent in future Hall of Famer Gary Carter as a pinch hitter for the pitcher spot. And Carter worked the count. On the fifth pitch of the at-bat, with the count one ball and two strikes, Carter hit the ball hard. It was a screaming liner. But Charlie Hayes reacted quickly and snagged the line drive for the final out of the game. Mulholland had done it. He had rewarded Philadelphia Phillies fans who had sat through seasons of bad baseball with a beautiful pitching performance right there in the city of brotherly love. Mulholland had come just inches from throwing a perfect game, which shows you just how difficult an accomplishment that is. In our next video, we will continue to look at no-hitters thrown by Phillies pitchers, this time with the improbable performance of Tommy Green in a game that didn't quite feel like a no-hitter until you got to the end of the seventh inning and looked at the scoreboard. For now, if you enjoyed this dive into great Phillies pitching performances, well, check out this video where we talk about the first great Phillies pitching superstar, Charlie Ferguson. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Check out the description box for a link to merchandise and for instructions on how you can support this channel. Thank you so much for watching.